Good morning, everyone. Today is uh, Wednesday, the 17th day of Iyar. Tonight, of course, the 18th of Iyar is Lagba Omer, the special day of Rabbi Shima Bar Yechai, the one that said that with his teachings, what he revealed to the world, we are going to greet Mashiach. So, and that's what we're doing here, learning the Tanya, is learning the Pnimius Atera, the inner part of the Torah. And today, we begin chapter 49 in Tanya. And this chapter takes the previous few chapters, as you remember, we discussed the greatness of Hashem and how Hashem, how God needs to reduce, contract His light in so many different ways in order for us to exist. And this is the kind of love that Hashem shows us. So in the last chapter, we focused more of the, on the inter- intellectual part of understanding the tzimtzum as much as possible. And uh, we explained the concept of the or asovev and or amemaleh, the encompassing light, and the feeling light, the light that fits to each in creature individually. The light that Hashem condensed so that we can exist. And today, in this chapter, the Alter Rebbe first is going to explain that not only the encompassing light needs to be contracted, but also the in Oram Emaleh, in the light that fits into the world also, although it's a very, very small, minute light compared to the encompassing light. Nevertheless, that light still needs to be contracted in many, many ways until we can be created as separate entities, human beings and creatures. And then the Altaheba takes it to the point of once we notice this, we see what Hashem does for us. This calls the reciprocity. When we feel Hashem's love to us, we want to do the same thing for Hashem. You know, yesterday I was listening to an um, interview with uh, one, a rabbi in Israel, uh, Baal Teshuvah. His name is Rabbi Nadav Cohen. And he gives lectures in Hebrew now. And he talks about he was he lives in a non-religious community in Moshav. And he's put in he changed his life. The people there are not religious, but he's completely, you know, he, he became totally fully religious. And then one Shabbos afternoon, he goes with his coat of the very middle of the summer it's very hot and still it goes with a black kapata with a hat and everything and he meets a bunch of his friends and he, they asked him what are you doing to yourself he says, don't you you see what you did you have so many restrictions now and 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 you changed and you put it upon you. So why do you need all this? Why can't you be, you know, before before that you were free, you were able to do whatever you want. Now you have so many restrictions. You have to wear this and you have to do this and you can't eat this and you can't eat that. And he tells them, a few of his friends, they're in their 30s, 40s. And he asked them, tell me, you know, Jew answers a question with a question. He says, tell me, you all are married now. You have children. Says, why, why did you get married? Wasn't it easier when you're single? You don't have to do anything. You don't have to answer to anybody. You can have whatever you want. You're not, you're not uh, confined with one woman. You can do whatever you want. You can, you know, you can live a free life. Why, why do you need to get married? And they, st- and they thought about it. And some of them said, uh, yes, you know, but... It is difficult, you know, you have to sacrifice, but it's worth it. When you have a family, you have children, we love this. Other friends answered him that it is 
we love our wife so much, we love our so, children so much, we don't feel that it's a sacrifice. We enjoy it. We enjoy giving to our spouses. We enjoy giving to our children, even though we give away we, and we look away from ourselves. And I said to them, exactly, that's exactly the point. When you realize, when you discover how much Hashem is your life, you enjoy it. You don't, you don't feel it's a sacrifice. You see the result and you enjoy the connection and you enjoy the, you love to be together with Hashem in every possible way. So wearing this and wearing that and putting on this mitzvah, doing that mitzvah, you don't feel like it's a confinement. On the contrary, you feel privileged to do this. And this is a little bit connected with the, what, what, what this Alter Rebbe is going to explain in this chapter. After understanding the contraction, what Hashem does for us, the long way that he goes in order to bring us to do, to be created human beings. Why does he do it? Because he loves us so much. He wants us and he wants the connection with us. Let's see inside al Rebbe in today's Tanya, chapter 49. says even though the particular aspect of the nature of the obscuring and the concealment of the infinite light of the blessed Ein Saif. In the descent of the world descending as they do ever lower until this material world was created, there are too numerous to count and are of many diverse kinds. So basically the Altarev is saying, Right now, it's not about explaining all the different contractions, what it goes through, creating one world to another world, from the higher to the lower. There are numerous, too numerous to count. And there are different types of contractions, as we'll soon see. Kayadua letoya me as is known to those who have tasted of the tree of life. What is the tree of life? It is the tree of the, the teachings of the Kabbalah, the Hasidus, the inner, the inner part, the mystical part of the Torah. But, says the Alter Rebbe, is going to teach us that generally speaking, there are three, there are three types of tzimtzumim, general tzimtzumim, general contractions. It says, mm-hmm. Yet, in general, there are three levels of powerful and comprehensive contractions. Giving rise to three comprehensive worlds. And each category consisting of myriads upon myriads of particulars. Oh, good These are, what are the three contractions, the three worlds? These are the worlds of Bria, because the world of Atsilus is godliness itself. So what is he saying here? He explains that, um, you know, we mentioned the number many times that there are the four worlds, worlds of Atsilus, emanation, worlds of Berea, creation, Yetzira, formation, and Asiya, action. And here he says 
that these the 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 three worlds Bria Tsirasia are the worlds that come after the contractions. After Hashem contracted the light. Although Atsilus is also not God himself. Okay, all the best. Enjoy the day. Yes, it is it is one with God, the world of Atsilus. However, the, it is it is a contraction before Atsilus also. Because Atsilus, the world of Atsilus still has the Chachma, the, the ten attributes, as we mentioned yesterday. So, yes, in, there is the contraction before the Atsilus, but, but nevertheless, there is a major difference between the world of Atsilus and the other three worlds. The world of Atsilus, the word Atsilus means emanation, and Atsilus means close to him, part of godliness itself. Because Atsilus does not have the feeling of self entities, that everything in Atsilus is totally united with God. Only after Atsilus, the next worlds, Bria, Yetzir, and Asiya, those are worlds where you needed major contractions and removal of the light of Hashem and contracting and filtering. There is different types of, of filtering and contractions. Just like when you have a light, when you have a light shining, and if the light is too bright, too strong, you need to contract the light. How do you do it? There's different ways. You can put up a curtain, and the light after the curtain is not the same. Or you can have a wall with a tiny hole in it, and in two, through the tiny hole, the light comes in. There's different ways of contracting the light. There's different ways of contract, contracting God's godly energy. And these are... So that's what he says, that generally speaking, the three contractions is the main, these three main worlds, Bria, Yetzirah, and Asiya. Continuing as Alter Rebbe, so, so the world of Atzillus is godliness itself. Okay, they, in order to create the world of Bria, which consists of the higher souls and angels, there are angels that come in the world of Yetzira, but some of the higher ones comes in the world of Berea. Same thing is true with the souls. <laughs> service to God is in the sphere of the intellectual faculties of Chabad, Chachma Binadas, which are clothed in them meaning the godliness is revealed to them in an intellectual manner through the three intellectual faculties of Chachma, Bina, Das, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. And they, meaning the souls and the angels, they apprehend them and receive influence from them, from the Chachma, Bina, and Das. In order to do that, you needed to have a tremendous contraction. They necessarily preceded a powerful contraction, as mentioned above, from Atsilus to Bria. And, and same thing also, so too from Bria to Yetzira. In order to Yetzira to be exist, which is a world far lower than the world of Bria, Again, you need to have, again, a kind of powerful contraction. Why? Although there was a contraction from Atzillus to Berea, so he says because that light, no matter how it is contracted, it is still considered endless and infinite compared to the lower world. For the minute portion of light, Minute that is in relation to the light found in Atzillus. Atzillus the, uh, after Atzillus was a major contraction. So that minute light that comes after the contraction from Atzillus, which clothes itself in the world of Bria, is still in a category of infinity in relation to the world of Yetzirah. That's why you needed another contraction. 
ואי אפשר להסלבש בוי אלא על ידי צמצום והלם. And it is unable to clothe itself in the latter, in, in, in Yetzirah, except through contraction and obscuration. וכן מיציר לעשייה, and so too, from Yetzirah to עשייה, you need again a contraction. So again, Dalterev says, um, he's talking about this concept only in general terms, he's not explaining in details what the contractions are and so on. And elaborated explanation of these contractions uh, is given elsewhere in order to make them more accessible to our poor intellect. To understand those things, we are like poor, we have poor intellect to understand. It's very deep. But the bottom line is that there is the contraction of Hashem's light and one contraction after another contraction. One infinite light is, is considered infinite compared to the lower world and, and the lower world is compared infinite compared to the yet lower world. What are these contractions for? What is the purpose of all of these contractions? Says Dalte Rebbe, ותכליס כל הצמצומים הוא כדי לברוי גוף האדם החומרי. The purpose of all the contractions is the creation of the material human body. And what is this purpose of the human body, the human physical body, the material body? says דלת הרבה, ולהקפיה לסטרה אחר. And the subjugation by man of the Sitra Acha. Sitra Acha is the other side, literally, meaning the impurity, the evil, that we are subjugating the, the, the impurity within, within us, the Sitra Acha, the other side. And ultimately, what it does, to bring about. The preeminence of light supplanting darkness. Just by having light replace darkness, and even more so, when the darkness itself is transformed into light, at which time the preeminence of light is felt to an even greater degree. How, we, how do you do it? How do we bring about this great accomplishment of transforming the light, the darkness into light? Says the Alter Rebbe, this is accomplished. When a person elevates his divine soul and his vivifying soul, a soul which receives its nourishment from the clippers on the other side. But through man's service in Torah and mitzvahs, then it's elevated and incorporated into holiness, thereby elevating the soul together with their garments. Together with the garments of thought, speech, and action, and all the powers of the body to elevate it to God alone, as has been discussed earlier at length. Because this is the purpose of the progressive descent of the world. In other words, all of these contractions that Hashem creates, myriads of myriads of worlds, what, it, what we mentioned, generally three worlds or four worlds, but again, they're, they're, they're subdivided into endless levels, and all of these contractions is what? The purpose of being here, us being here in this world, and to be able to elevate our neshama, our godly soul, our vivifying soul to Hashem by subjugating and doing everything what Hashem wants. So, so once we understand what Hashem does for us, 
that he has been so to see Hashem put himself aside in order to create us, this should arouse within us a, a, a reflecting emotion. In they come I'm upon him, upon him, as water mirrors the reflection of a face, just as water reflects an exact replica of one's face, so too with regard to the heart, man, the, the heart of man to his fellow man, the love of one person to another results in the other person's loving him as well. So the same thing is also when we're talking about a God. Just as God, as it were, laid down and set aside, and set aside figuratively, figuratively speaking, his great infinite light. And he has stored it away and he concealed it by means of three different kinds of contractions. And why did he do it? And all this because of his love for lowly men in order to raise him up to God. Why did he do it? Why did Hashem contract all, all, all of this? In order for his love for us, he wants to elevate us. And al Rebbe says, Ki For love impels the flesh. What does it mean? What is al Rebbe saying here? They say, Usually love uh, is an emotion that brings out expansion, becoming bigger. Love is an, about expansion. Contraction is more of a restriction. But here it says, Here it says the love also has a, a way of contracting. I'm, I love so much or I contract for you. I say a joke, you know, tonight is like Baomer, people fire travel from all over Eretz Israel to Miron, to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai. I say a joke that once someone was driving up to Miron, and on the way, people stop him, can we join, can we join? Yeah, yeah, sure, come in, come in, come into the car. And sure enough, he fills up a car, and a police officer stops him on the way, and he orders everybody out, and he starts counting. Starts counting in a car, it's supposed to take five people. You have 12 people inside. Then he writes him a ticket and they go to the judge. And they come in front of the judge. And the judge says, This is the what you accused of. And he says, Your Honor, see, I drive a Toyota Corolla. The officer says, I had 12 people in the car. My car is right outside in the parking lot. If you want, let's see, let's see. Let's bring 12 people. Let's try to get them inside. If they fit, I guarantee you I paid the, the ticket. I admit. So they, decide, they did it. They tried to they push in five, six, seven, eight. Couldn't, couldn't fit anymore. And the judge dismissed the, the, the ticket. And after the... He got out, the officer tells him, come on, between me and you. We know, I counted 12 people. So he tells him, yes, those 12 people wanted to get in. When you want to get in, then you can get in. When you, when you don't want to get in, you, you don't get in. The love pushes the, the flesh, squeezes the flesh, and the love, when you have, they say that when there is room in the heart, there is room in, in the house. So we have the love. Says, says the Alta Rabbi here, Hashem, out of the love that He has to us, the love that Hashem has to every, each and every single Jew that He wants 
that connection. Hashem, that, that caused Hashem to contract his life because of that great love that he has for us. Continues the Alter Rebbe. Halachas kama ve kama ve kifle kiflaim le'en kates. How much more? And an infinite number of times more. It is fitting that a man also should relinquish and set aside all he possesses, both spiritually and physically, and renounce everything to do it for what? For Hashem. In order to cleave to him, with attachment, desire, and longing, without any hindrance. There should be no hindrance within or without. Nor money, nor wife. Neither of body or nor soul, nor money, nor wife and children. In other words, even the love that you have for, 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 for money, for your wife and for your children, is something that we should put aside. We should put aside for, for Hashem. Of course, we're supposed to provide, we're supposed to do everything because God commanded us all. But when we do it, because not because it's Hashem's commandment, we do it because we, this is our desire, then this desire you should put away. And you should sacrifice this and to do what Hashem wants. This will enable one to understand the eminently reasonable explanation of the rabbinic enactment ordaining the recitation of the blessing of the Shema, two blessings preceding it, and so on. Al Tarebe asked a question here. We know when you say a blessing, before you do a mitzvah, you're supposed to say a blessing. So here, before the, the, we say the Shema, the, the, the rabbis ordained, we should put, say those, the two blessings. Two blessings, what are the blessings? It seems to be that they have not, no connection with the, with the Shema. And yet, for example, if, if a person said the Shema and he realized he forgot to say the blessings after, then he remembers, oh yeah, I didn't say the blessings of the Shema. Are you allowed to say the blessings? Yes. The, the, the law says yes. But if let's say, if let's say you, you, may, you take a little of an drug and you, make, and you forgot to make the bracha and you did the mitzvah and then you remember, oh after you put it away, you say, remember, I didn't make the bracha. Are you allowed to say the bracha? The answer is no. You're not allowed to say the blessing. Why? Because the blessing of a mitzvah, you are supposed to say right before you do the mitzvah, not after. So, but here, the blessing of Shema seems to have no connection with Shema. So why did our sages establish those blessings? If you look into the Siddur, you have these blessings before the Shema. What's the connection with the Shema? So the Alter Rebbe is going to explain that those blessings are a preparation for the Shema because what is Shema all about? The mitzvah of saying the Shema every morning, every night is Shema in order to commit our love to Hashem. And those blessings describe this exact thing what he explains in this chapter. They describe the, all of the angels. What well, the angels realize the greatness of Hashem and how Hashem condensed and contracted his light. And where is he found? Down here with us. All of this, <laughs> when we think about the love that Hashem has for us, this prepares us to do the Shema and to focus on the love that we should have to Hashem and the sacrifices that we ought to have to Hashem. That's what the Rebbe says. For at first glance, it would appear that they have no connection whatsoever with the recital of the Shema. And other halachic authorities have stated 
Why do they call it? Why then they, they term the blessings of the Shema? And also, and why was it ordained that they will be they should be recited specifically before saying the Shema? And the answer is. But the reason is that the essence of the recital of Shema is to fulfill the injunction that we should have is love your God with all your heart. All your hearts. Hearts is plural. That is with both inclinations. What does it mean? Usually when that says Bishnei Yitzarecha, we explained that we need to serve Hashem also with the evil inclination as well. Here is said Vishnei Tzarecha that we have to fight the other side. We have to be ready to sacrifice and give away. We have a desire to do material things, the natural things that Hashem gave us in the nature to love. And yet we need to make sure that those things do not obscure and do not stop us from loving Hashem. That is to say, to withstand, to withstand anything that hinders him from the love of God. And when it says, your heart, what does it allude to? To one's wife and her children. The wife and the children to whom a man's heart is by his very nature bound. God made us part of our nature to love our wife. God made us by, by the nature to love our children. That, of course, is even more so. Nobody stops loving the children. As our sages said, al pasuk hu and the verse, it says, he spoke and it came to be, to pass. It says, our sages say, Zu Isha. God made it. God ordained it, made it the nature that we should love. We should love our wives. And he commanded, and it stood fast, that, is, that refers to the children. And by your soul and your might is understood literally your life and sustenance. All are renounced for the love of God. So, of course, what it means, obviously, some people may take it in the wrong way. They say, okay, I want to get, I have too much headache in the house. Too noisy, the wife, children making, let me go run away and go. I need to go pray to Hashem. If you do it because of your, probably your place is to be in the house at the moment. Your place is, is to be with you and help your wife with the children and so on. But what he's saying is the nature that God gave us to enjoy life with the wife, to enjoy the children. And, and when it comes to go to, to Daven, when it comes to go to the mitzvah, you can say to them, you know what, let me, I, I enjoy so much here at home with my wife, with my children. If you do it for your own enjoyment, then we know, we, we, then you have to realize and say, that's exactly what the Shema is about. Make sure to give away yours, just like God looks away everything and contract himself to be, to make sure that you have a relationship with him. You do the same and put away your own thing, and just like the symptoms, the contractions, there's two types of contractions. As we said earlier, God removed his light in order to create the new world. And then he contracted the light that was already contracted in order to, for us to be physical beings. And the same thing, we also have the two types of sacrifices to Hashem. There's certain things that we need to be completely removed things that are not kosher, things that are forbidden, that we completely remove. And then there's things that are contracted, things that are permissible, but we nevertheless put them away in order to do what Hashem wants, in order to be with Hashem. So this is the end of today's shir. 
And again, it was a long shear, but uh, tomorrow the Alter Rebbe will continue with the explanations and, and should all have a happy luck, Omer. Don't forget, join us tonight for the barbecue and we should only have good news. Any questions we can take now.